Well, it's good to be back on Grace to Stand, and uh, you got both Darren and myself this week. So, Darren, how you doing? I am doing great, and uh, it is pouring down rain inside, but nice and warm and dry here. So it's good to see you back. You were in Florida over yes, the like- past couple weeks. So how's my tan? <laughs> Better than mine. You're not glowing from the top of your head like I am. So, uh, I, uh, you know, like everybody's it was a great time. You went to a conference down there too. Well, I mean, you were on vacation visiting family and all that, but you also, I know, went to to a conference. I think it was at Coral Ridge or something like that. And I saw your that is awesome. I, I and I'm having conversations okay. with Rob Pacienza, the pastor at Coral uh-huh. Ridge Presbyterian Church, to um to maybe have him on one of the podcasts because I love what he's doing down there. Um, so Coral Ridge where, you know, D James Kennedy was the founding pastor. Mm-hmm. The current senior pastor is Rob Pacienza, who is a friend. And he started this thing called the Institute for faith and culture, which mm-hmm. is really, I mean, it's only like a year old as far as I can tell, but the thing is really like a powerhouse. I mean, mm-hmm. and really just how our faith works itself out in culture, uh, as opposed to being, um, you know, escapist, and, and right. whatever else. And so I was down in Florida with my boys, actually, which was, this is something we do every spring. And whenever I say that, people say, well, what if your daughter wanted to go? <laughs> it's like, yes, every year I invite my daughter and she really likes that time with my wife and my wife, um, she prefer not to take that time off from work. And so it's yeah. turned into a boy's trip. That's uh, all right. Yeah. Right. Well, while we're down there, I, <clears throat> I was researching this Institute of Faith and Culture and I see that Tim Tebow is going to be one of the speakers at this thing Mm -hmm. and Rosaria Butterfield and um, a a number of others. And so uh, I was like, told my boys, you want to go to this conference? So we actually like last minute went to this thing and it was, it was cool. It was very cool. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I got my tan, but everybody here says, well, you're always tan. And so it is what it is. (laughs) I mean, (laughs) yes. Com- compared to to us gringos, yes, you are. So that's a, <laughs> a good thing. You can always carry that with you. Yes. I'm, well, I'm glad. So you know, Pablo, Pastor Pablo, co- considers me a gringo. I don't. He doesn't. <laughs> co- to him, I'm a gringo, even though uh, my family's from the Middle East. I guess. Yes, you know, right, Being right, third right. generation doesn't qualify. I guess. Doesn't. Anymore, no, but... not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, I am back. I appreciated your your um doing the podcast without me on uh, political, a little bit political theology and um, a little bit based on the conference that you had been to and my people enjoyed it. And so it was very, it was very right. helpful. So thanks mm-hmm. for some of your thoughts and insights on mm-hmm. how Christians live out their citizenship in a, in a post-Christian place. Well, it's going to be an increasingly important question for us to ask and answer as we uh, move on in, in a world that is, you know, anta- antagon- anta- antagonistic towards Christianity, yes. uh, it always has been. I mean, this is nothing new, but it it seems to be like the, the heat is turning up some. And then as we enter into a presidential election season and whatever ends up happening there, I think is going to, uh, to, to rattle. Um, a lot of what's going on in in our country. And so how we live as citizens in that culture and in that political structure is something that we need to give some serious consideration to. So I appreciate the feedback. And and I think that you and I will be touching on that issue even more as we enter into the summertime and as the campaigns start to heat up and we get a little bit closer to the election. Right, because... Christ is King. Yes, and, <laughs> and so right. that, hey, that, what a great segue. It's like you've that done was it. we didn't even plan that. So yeah. yeah, we are going to talk today about the Christ is King. This, um, if you're not on Twitter, then you don't know that there's actually controversy over this long-held profession and confession of Christianity that Christ is King. Uh, apparently, this is now being viewed as a slur. It's being characterized as anti-Semitic, and um, there's a whole dust up about it. And so Darren and I are going to kind of dig into this a little bit, this Christ is King uh, phenomenon on social media, but but to really turn it to, you know, the the 
the church around the world will be celebrating the resurrection of Christ this Sunday. And as a, uh, as a good reformed person, I want to always highlight the fact that we celebrate the res resurrection of Christ every Sunday. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. But <laughs> yes. I do recognize uh, that, you know, globally, universally, that the church sets this day apart, at least um, to do this in, in a more focused way. And so we want to talk about the resurrection and the fact that Christ is King and, and he is on the throne. I mean, Psalm two, you know, with the Ascension. So we want to go there, but, but first why this has even become controversial. And um, I have some tweets to show, but I, before I get into that, Darren, I want to ask you, like, were you aware of this? Did you realize that saying Christ, the King or posting Christ is King is, um, is anti-Semitic now, and um, maybe we'll get you canceled? <laughs> no, I was not, absolutely not until Monday. And, I, and I'm and i not on Twitter or X or whatever it is. You're smart. Uh, but I, yes, I, I have a limited capacity to handle all of that drama. But I am <laughs> on Facebook, and uh, I, I keep up with you know, some of what's being discussed in the world that I'm, that I'm not actively part of or, or participating in. And, uh, and so on Monday, I discovered that there was some kind of kerfuffle about <laughs> the usage of Christ as king and that being somehow perceived to be anti-Semitic. And, you know, then it's huh? Yeah, <laughs> what you know? How, what a, I love a, that. A, a big, a big, uh, you know, I, I don't know, like middle school drama thing happening on on Twitter, and uh, and it, and it really involved, uh, from what I understood, understood Candace Owens and and her tweeting uh, about this, and she has done so in the past, and. So uh, articles were starting to be written by various sources within the Christian world. And I was reading through some of those and, and I just, it was befuddling to me because I'm, you know, I've heard of a lot of things being called anti-Semitic that were actually anti-Semitic and, and then sometimes, you know, not, not so much. And I've never heard anybody accuse uh, a Christian or, or, perceive that the saying uh, Christ is king was specifically anti-Semitic. That's something that all Christians, all actual real Christians everywhere believe or ought to believe and affirm. I mean, how, how can you not affirm that? Yeah. All authority, Jesus says, all authority in heaven and earth has been given unto me uh, right before he issues the Great Commission. So, I mean, that's, yeah. a, that's the preamble well, to it. <laughs> and of course, rightly understood, it, it's it's of course not anti-Semitic. Jesus no. was a Jewish man, um, yes. you know. So, but uh, he was on his cross, you know, the King of the Jews. He's the King of the world, actually. So let's talk about uh, a little bit about the um, what, why, how this all kind of transpired. And actually, you showed me in an article that that you shared with me that it, this actually goes back. Um, a, a, at least four years ago mm -hmm. and it's sort of coming up now, but where, how it seemed to become a viral thing was the Candace Owens, Ben Shapiro spat back in the fall. And so I'll just go through that briefly to say, you know, with the Israeli Palestinian conflict war, there was a dispute between Ben Shapiro, who is the owner of the daily wire, which is a conservative media organization. They do, you know, shows and podcasts and, and um, articles and all kinds of things. And Candace Owen was a contributor, writer, employee of the daily wire. Now, Ben Shapiro is uh, a, a Jewish man. And mm -hmm. I think that's pretty obvious and very much, um, on the side of the Jewish people, obviously. And Candace Owen had said some things questioning Israel's response to... Yeah, this it, particular it, conflict was began uh, by an attack from Hamas, right. which is an Islamic terror organization. So, I mean, that's where it, where it began, but there's, it's been the response that, and how that has all played out in the international community that's that's right. caused lots of controversy. Candace questioned 
Israel's response in ways that offended Ben Shapiro. And it turned into this huge spat because they once were aligned Candace Owens as a um, a black woman who is conservative, Ben Shapiro as a Jewish man who is conservative in this media organization. And it was very vocal. And Candace basically said, quoted scripture. In relationship, mm -hmm. I think, to their spat, but it can be read in terms of the conflict with Israel and, and the Palestinians. But blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you. And it goes on and on. And of course, she's just, it's the beatitude. So Ben tweets, Candace, if you think that taking money from the Daily Wire somehow comes between you and God, by all means, quit. So Ben, like, it looked like she was trying to say, let's make peace, or maybe she was, maybe it was self-serving and saying, I'm being the bigger person here. Who knows? But Ben basically attacks her use of scripture. So Bear, but Candace basically says, you're out of line for suggesting that I can't quote biblical scripture. The Bible is not about you. And then she says, Christ is king. And mm -hmm. in the context of, like, if you just took the context of this discussion, you're not king, Ben, Christ is king. I serve Christ, not you, essentially. However, in the context of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, in the context of the bigger sort of thing that's going on, it was starting to be taken as being an anti-Semitic phrase. Mm -hmm. And then what she just tweeted as Christ is king with a cross and a Bible, it looked like, became a hashtag Christ is king and has really been used in seemingly anti-Semitic ways. In other words, in the, in the context of debate about Jewish people here and is Israel's response, it's sort of being thrown out there as a slur. Is that your understanding? Right. Um, I mean, there were, so there have been others uh, that have posted this recently on social media, such as Andrew Tate, who's a truly deplorable person in, in just about every manifestation, who's a Muslim, by the way, and, uh, and he posts Christ as king. Now, what on earth would a Muslim have any interest in posting the phrase Christ as king? Other so clearly he's not professing Christ as king. No, it's not a confession not. profession. It's it's a it is it's an it's a slur against the Jews. It's a slur. It's a slur. Yeah. This is a, this this has not been some kind of um you know re, repentance and discovery, you know, a conversion. That, not at all. That's not what that's all about. And um it, and it's also been connected with uh uh, an individual named Nick Fuentes, who is uh, has been on various media platforms and uh, and gave a, a speech on a on one of these media platforms, a video where he bemoaned the Jewish influence in American institutions, politics, business, and so forth, and. Uh, and then he said that America is not a Jewish nation. America is a Christian nation. And the crowd, which which was unseen in the video, and it's it's not. I'm not sure. It, it seems as if they were um, maybe uh, just sort of it kind of piped in. Not not actual people, for instance, just uh, technologically introduced. Uh, the crowd started chanting in response to him saying, America is not a Christian or Jewish nation, it's a Christian nation. The crowd starts chanting Christ is king, which, you know, you have to understand that this, is, this person is a Holocaust denying white supremacist who's openly praised Adolf Hitler. Uh, who's and that, Nick Fuentes? This is Nick Fuentes. He's 25 years old. <laughs> um, he... Uh, he he did he was he was one of the speakers at the January sixth uh, you know event that happened in Washington D.C. Um, and there was just a whole host of uh, of issues connected with him, Andrew Tate, um, who uh, is is just is well known in that kind of orbit of world who is also who is a Muslim pronouncing Christ as King, and Candace Owens doing so. 
it 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 had a bad look whether or, or not it was motivated by anti-semitism on the part of candace owens part or not and um so there was you know, there was this recent tweet and so now it's just become this huge social media debate is it a is it anti-semitic you and I, of well, course, are going to say absolutely not. <laughs> right. Like you, you turned me on to this article by uh, Josh Buse. Is that how you say his name? Mm-hmm. At G3, yeah. uh, Reformed Baptist, which talks about the controversy. And what's interesting is most people today would, would relate it to what you just said and I just said. With, but he, he was saying that this was being chanted during the January 6th. So this, this Jack, whoever this guy is, says it was one of the first indications that Christian nationalism would be a theme of the Capitol attack later that day when young men waving America first flags broke into the chant, Christ is King. And again, mm-hmm. I don't have a way to verify that. I'm not going back. To, 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 but just to say sure, sure. bad, bad actors or people that aren't trying to propagate the gospel are, are chanting this as a way to own leftists. And Jewish people, obviously. Darren, what it really does, and what, what's complicated about this is, it really always puts Christians on on defense. I mean, that Christ is king is a foundational profession of, of Christians. He, he, he is king. Mm-hmm. And so now to say that, it's, it really becomes self-serving on the part of of leftist organizations, the media and everybody else, because now they have a way to say that, like to cancel that. And in doing so, canceling Christians to just our, I mean, this is our profession, especially this week for those who, who, um, right. You know, observe the, the, the church calendar or whatever. Right. I mean, and at all times, the Christian professes that Christ is King. I mean, how many churches, of various denominations and stripes and theological sensibilities have the name Christ the King. Christ is King. He he is he rules and reigns over all things, over all institutions, over all people, and he will come once again to judge the living and the dead and to establish the new heavens and the new earth over which he will reign. And he reigns over this world now. So this is not something that's at all controversial or all a matter of splitting hairs within the, 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 uh, the Christian world, except for those who deny anything, who profess to be Christians, but deny every essential doctrine that is connected with Christianity. But you're right, George, because in the in this social media world where people can post things that go out to i mean you saw that post that was that was viewed by Ben Shapiro 26 over 26 million people viewed that post that's more than the oh, I didn't even notice that of North Carolina uh, South Carolina and and perhaps Georgia combined the entire populations of those wow. two, those three states i mean that's we're we're talking Million. We're not talking a, a few, you know, backwater, you know, off the grid people here. We're talking about uh, what eight percent of the United States. <laughs> I mean, that's a huge number of people, and so uh, millions of people. And this gets propagated out, and media outlets pick that up. And and it's important that we understand that our words matter. It's, it's somewhat important that we understand how people are using these phrases that Christians have used for centuries and how they're using them in nefarious ways. But no Christian right. ought to ever back down from the absolute firm assertion that Christ is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That's not, that's not a, a man-made, that, I mean, that, that is, that is, just absolute from the, the, the root of scripture from cover to cover. So, yeah. So some, yeah, I mean, like it's the second Psalm, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Why do the nations rage and the people's plot in vain? The Kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel mm-hmm. together against the Lord and against his anointed <clears throat> saying, let us burst their bonds apart and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord holds them in derision. 
Then he will speak to them in his wrath and terrify them in his fury, saying, As for me, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. Mm -hmm. I will tell the decree. The Lord said to me, you are my son today. I have begotten you. And it goes on and says, kiss the son. Let, oh, you Kings. Mm -hmm. So yes, that is, you know, that is who Jesus Christ is. Uh, he is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, mm -hmm. no doubt. Um, but I, I don't think when we're in our petty spats here and, and maybe the word isn't petty. I mean, there, these disagreements are over serious things, but when we're in disagreements over things to throw that out there with no sort of gospel context to why you're saying it, then it does become a, a, a weapon. You, you're weaponizing something that isn't meant to be weaponized. Like every right. knee will bow, every tongue will confess, right? But the gospel spreads through the proclamation and the preaching of the good news of Jesus Christ who came to save. Right. <laughs> and as part yeah. of that, we can talk about judgment, but when you bring it out of left field, and particularly when not when people who clearly aren't Christians are throwing it out there. Right. And are clearly using it in in uh, in hostile fashion towards an, an entire demographic of, of people who have been perceived as as being um you know, this, this uh, force for evil in the world or, or in American culture. I mean, you know, to, to, to use it in some sort of anti-Jewish way is never, it has never been the intent, the intent whatsoever. It's just the acknowledgement that Christ is the King of the Jews. He's the King of the Gentiles. He's the King of the, the Arabs and the Japanese and the Russians and the French and of all people, he reigns over all of that. And so I, I think that, uh, that we need to lean into that. But the thing is, is that Christians just need to know their Bibles and they need to have a theology of this shaped by the Bible rather than, than shaped by any sort of far ultra right anti-Semitic truly white, truly white supremacists that type people or, or others who are using it in really combative and wicked ways. I mean, it's blasphemous the way that they're using it. Yeah, uh, that, that, that's a great, so, that's a great point. And, and, and yet it is interesting that it's all sort of happening, correlating with once again, when the global church will celebrate, um, right, what, right. you know, what we call, you know, Good Friday, Easter Sunday, mm -hmm. yeah. Christ rises from the dead. Without that, there's no Christianity, right? Yes. And, and in his ascension, and he takes the throne, he is the king. He is the ruler. And, but once again, his gospel goes out through the proclamation of the gospel. <laughs> it right, doesn't go out right. through the sword. The weapons of as the church as, are the... <clears throat> Or the proclamation of, of the word. That's the weapon. That's how the, that's the weapon that the church uses, not to weaponize the word, but the weapon that we use is the sword of the spirit through the proclamation of the word, depending upon the Holy Spirit to save and sanctify his people, to make disciples. And we trust that, that the <clears throat> spirit of Christ does indeed bring that to pass. But, um, but yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're always looking to Christ as, as, as the King, because he is also the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, meaning that we live our lives in submission to him and we honor him and we obey him and our life is to be shaped by him. So any sort of shirking on that, uh, that profession, uh, it, it d destroys and undermines the, the entirety of our faith. And the reason why we can be confident that Christ is King is like you said, because not only that he died for our sins, but that he's risen for them. He's ascended to the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, and he will indeed come to judge the living and the dead. So in, in him, as Paul says in Colossians, all things are preeminent. Right. What are some concluding thoughts we have apart from this whole controversy? What are some thoughts just on the resurrection itself? <clears throat> As, our, as it's oh, on our people's minds right now. Yeah, I mean, I have, I have several. I'll, of course. I, mean, I think I think one is that um, again, as Christians, we need to take our cues from Scripture alone, 
and let scripture shape our understanding of what is happening politically, socially, and so forth, and not take our cues from <clears throat> the, the talking heads on the news or the Twitter stars or whatever the, the case may be. When we use the word Christ as King, let it be shaped um, by scripture. Lean into that with all of your life that Christ is King. Steer steer clear of some of these off the grid, the ultra ultra nut jobs. A lot of Christians that we're that are in our circles. I mean, I think George, you and I would both consider ourselves to be conservative Christians, and by that, what we mean is we are people who are Bible believing, gospel preaching, Christ exalting Christians who, who uh, desire to conserve what is true in Scripture. And that shapes our, our whole outlook on every other aspect of life. But one of my concerns that I, that I sometimes see in the church is we have a segment of people who spend so much time consuming certain people who are preaching to them or speaking to them that have that have really very little accountability and and they go so far off the grid that sometimes they're conspiratorial and sometimes they're outright i mean they they are conservatives but they're conservatives without christ and there's a there's a fundamental difference between a conserv between someone who is who's christianity who's understanding of Christ and the scriptures shape the way in which they view politics and culture and some of these this phraseology versus someone who's a conservative and takes that uh, and doesn't have Christ centering them and orienting all of their thoughts. And, um, and ultimately, as we look forward to the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that's that has to our sights have to constantly be on the resurrected Christ who is reigning and ruling. And we, you know, you mentioned it at the, at the beginning where we give, you know, special attention to that this upcoming Sunday, which we celebrate on Resurrection Day or Easter Day. But every Lord's Day, we come back every every seven days. We come back and we return to celebrate on Sunday, the first day of the week, the day that Christ rose from the dead, that, that we celebrate that resurrected Christ, which is to fuel us throughout our whole life and, and uh, lead us to, to acknowledge with our lips and our lives that Christ is indeed King. Yeah. Wow. Good word, Darren. I'll close with two, two scriptures. Uh, one is first Corinthians 12, Verse three, the second half, no one can say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Spirit. Right. <laughs> and so we don't expect uh, we, we don't expect that from the unregenerate. We can, of course, say it. And I think we, we should. I, I, I'm only doing OK with saying it in, in the political sphere. Like I be, like, yeah, we right. answer to Jesus Christ. And that's why we mm -hmm. want these laws to be just and righteous. Um you know, the Christians that were uh, there to abolish slavery did so because Christ is king and, and the state wasn't king. And so I'm hoping OK to say it in a political context, but not not as a weapon. And we don't expect that profession from the unregenerate. But secondly, and this flows right from your point and right from your encouragement is, is Colossians 3. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. And I just think that's, you know, that is such a beautiful message of the resurrection and the kingship and lordship of Jesus Christ Absolutely. is that we have died with him. We're buried with him. We've risen with him. Uh, we walk in newness of life. Now that means we have our minds set on heavenly things as we mm -hmm. set to bring uh, your kingdom come, your <clears throat> will be done mm -hmm. on earth as it is mm -hmm. in heaven. And mm -hmm. so it's not a disconnection from the physical and, and the earth, but we are seeking to bring heaven to earth even as um, heaven has come to us in the person of Jesus Christ. 
And then that last verse I read, when Christ, who is your life, appears. I love that. Right. So that's grace to stand on, Darren. Good talking to you again. It is. Yeah, thanks, George. And uh, happy day of resurrection to you and to your family and to your church. And we'll look forward to being back next time on Grace to Stand.